Today we're going to demonstrate how to set up the Liberty Cycler. First, you want to shut the door, make sure that the windows are closed, make sure that the air is not running and that you don't have a fan running in the room. Next, what we're going to do is wipe our machine down with bleach. At home, you might have these bleach wipes or we have taught you how to make a bleach solution. Um, you might want to use gloves for this if you don't want your hands smelling like the bleach rags. I like to grab a paper towel and wipe the screen down in case um, there's residue on it. Makes it a little easier to see. You want to wipe all the outside surfaces of your cycler down. Anything where your hands might touch. You should be wiping down your organizer every day. And that includes really getting into all the nooks and crannies, especially these spots right here where your catheter goes and where we're going to put the patient line. Okay, we'll wipe down the sides. We'll wipe down the power button. Okay. You'll also want to wipe down your work surface that you use to put your little gauze pads on and your alcabus. As soon as we've wiped down the machine, we're going to go ahead and turn it on and we're going to gather our supplies. Okay, you'll need hand sanitizer. You'll need the solutions that are programmed for your prescription. You will need a cassette. Um, and depending on whether you're using drain bags or not, um, you can get a set of drain bags with the four yellow clamps. We also need a couple gauze pads, a new cap, and our alcabus. Alcabus is the blue solution. Okay, after I've gathered my supplies, I'm gonna perform a one minute hand wash. Prior to washing my hands, I'm gonna make sure that my mask is on my face and if anybody else is in the room, they need to be masking as well. You wanna get enough soap to coat the entire surfaces of your hands and we wash our hands for 60 seconds or one minute. If you have rings on, make sure that you're getting around your rings. Best practice is to just take your rings off. We can scrub the inside of our palms to make sure we're getting underneath of our fingernails. We'll wanna make sure we're getting in between our fingers. You have trouble remembering um, to sing happy birthday three times. You can get a little timer clock to sit by your sink to remind you to hand wash for the one minute. You'll rinse your hands completely. You need to have disposable towels or paper towels next to your sink. You'll want to dry your hands completely in between the fingers tops of the hands and you'll turn off the faucet with the paper towel. Next you're going to come over to your machine. The first screen that you see is going to be your treatment. Um, you're going to verify that your prescription looks correct on the machine and as soon as that's ready we'll press OK to start our treatment.
During this time, it's helpful to grab your cassette. You'll grab it by the donut. You'll tear at the perforated line. We're going to grab our donut out of the package. and flip it over. We wanna inspect the cassette to make sure that all of our lines are in the holder here and that nobody's gonna jump ship on us. You wanna inspect the back of the cassette to make sure there are no tears or rips. And make sure everything looks good. During the time that your machine is booting up and getting ready to perform treatment, you shouldn't be touching a whole lot of things other than your supplies. Um, you should also not be putting your cassette onto anything except for holding it. On step one, the machine says to gather supplies, mask, and wash hands. We've done that. So next step is to insert the cassette. You'll open the cassette door. You'll place your index finger Underneath the hourglass here, we're going to slide this behind the bar. There are two metal flanges at the top of your door. We're going to slide this up under those flanges. I'm going to hold the plus sign with my thumb so that the cassette doesn't fall, and I'm going to push it over this metal hinge. Okay? Now, before you close the door, you're going to want to make sure that you insert the patient connector into the stay safe organizer. This right here is our stay safe organizer. This right here is the patient connector. We are going to go ahead and take these two large tapes off and you can just throw them down. Gently let them go and make sure that everybody is still in their organizer. You'll grab the blue patient line and we are going to insert the blue circle into the open circle space inside the organizer. And then we'll flip it over just like it fits in like a puzzle piece. Make sure that's in nice and secure and you can bring your blue clamp down. As soon as I've made sure everything is done on this screen, I'm going to shut the cassette door. This will move into another test by the machine. During this time, I'm going to start opening my solution bags and checking for scale. Okay, I have one bag of solution here for our demonstration. It is a 3000 milliliter bag. It is a 1.5% dextrose solution. It expires in May, 2022. When I inspect the bag, it looks clear. I don't see any con or any sediment or floaters inside the bag. And when I squeeze it, there's no drips, meaning that the bag is nice and dry. Okay, now we're on to step two. Step two says to connect the solution lines place the bag on heater tray, and then connect your drain line, okay? So we take our solution bags and we are going to place them on top of the cycler with the connector facing us. So if you have more than one bag, I want you to set your heater bag farthest to the right, and then your next bag will be um, farthest to the left. Anytime we're gonna open a cap, and twist off a cap, we need to make sure our hands are as clean as they possibly can be. So we need to first 
take a pump of hand sanitizer and we're gonna coat the entire surface of our hands just like we wash our hands. You need to make sure that you're rubbing and creating friction to dry the hand sanitizer completely before you take off the cap. We take off the bag cap first. We use an OK symbol to grab the red part of the connector and we unscrew the cap and set it aside. We grab the red line first and we're going to pull this cap off. Now we can't touch the inside of this or we can't touch the outside of this bag with our fingers. They can only touch each other. We're going to twist this connection nice and tight. There shouldn't be any gaps right here. It should be white to red, okay? So I've made my solution line connection. Now it says to place the bag on the heater tray. What that means is we're gonna take the bag and rearrange it so that the edge of the bag is right up against the edge of the cycler and that the line hangs down freely without any kinks. If you have a second solution line, this is where you would grab your bag and you would hang it from either this side or this side of your cycler. Next, it tells us to connect our drain line. So we're gonna grab our yellow line, which is indicated by a yellow clamp, we can go ahead and tear the tape and we're going to go and place this in our drain. Now, if your drain is in the bathroom down the hall and you have to be opening up door handles, when you come back in to finish setting up your cycler, you need to hand sanitize when you get back. So this is how this is going to look. I'm going to take my drain line and put it into my drain. Had I opened a door, I'm going to come back in the room, shut the door, and hand sanitize again. If you're using drain bags, at this point we would fan our drain bags out underneath of our cart and connect our drain bags to that yellow waistline. We're going to verify that we've completed each step on the cycler, and then it tells us to press next to continue. This is the longest test that the cycler will do. It's about four and a half minutes. During this time, I usually like to get my new cap and place it into the new cap spot. I like to prepare my gauze pads with my Alcavis. You can either separate them or do them in one pile. Feel free to clean up a little bit as needed. Just remember that if you are touching anything outside of your supplies, you need to come back and hand sanitize. After the step two has completed, we are going to take our tape and we're going to tape our lines to the bar. So I just grab a piece of tape and I'm going to place this tape where the remaining lines are on the bar. This will hold your lines in place when you go to clamp your unused lines. This step tells us to break the cones and clamp the unused lines. Your cones are in your solution bags. They're a little red cone on the red extension piece of your connector here. We grab the cone with two fingers and we're going to snap the other part back and forth with our hands. You should see a gap or you should see part of that white filament. That's how you know that the cone's broken correctly. Some customer service representatives will tell you to get the cone into the bag so that there's not a potential for the cone to make a block. After you've broke your cones, you will come down here and you will clamp the unused lines. The unused lines are only the lines with the blue caps on top on your blue organizer bar here. These are the only ones we're clamping.
Okay. With that done, I verify that I've completed all of my, my steps on the screen and I'm gonna press next to continue. If you have a bag on the side of your machine, make sure that you're also making sure that you broke that cone down there. On step four, it's asking us to verify the bag connections. So a solid box means that that bag is connected to that line. These broken boxes mean that those are clamped. So you're gonna evaluate your prescription and make sure that you have the appropriate number bags for your therapy. Your home therapy's nurse should have given you the correct number of bags to hook up during training. In this case, I have one bag connected and it's the bag on top, the heater bag. The clamp is open and ready to use. If this doesn't look correct, you will need to press back to complete the bag verification test again. Press next to continue. On step five, the screen tells us to ensure that the blue line clamp is open. This right here is your blue line. So it wants us to make sure that this clamp right here is open because it's ready to prime the air out of this line. It is open, so I'm going to press next to continue. During this phase, around five to seven seconds, we are going to watch the fluid come up the line and reach the end of our patient connector.
on step six screen, it is extremely important to make sure that you have seen the fluid come all the way to the end of your connector. What happens if you didn't see the fluid come? You will grab the patient line near the clamp and you will bounce the line up and down and you can see that the bubble at the end of your connector is bouncing up and down. This is how you know your fluid and your line has primed correctly. What if your line didn't come until the it stopped right here? Okay, we don't want all of this air to go into your belly, so you are going to press back to prime again. However, if you know that all of your fluid has come to the top, we will close the patient line clamp. This right here is the patient line, also known as the blue line. So I'm going to, I know my bubble came up, so I'm going to close this clamp. And then it tells me to press next to continue. Most of you will not be doing a daytime exchange during, with a manual, so we skip these next two screens. So we're gonna skip it and skip it again. This screen right here is telling us that we are ready to connect for treatment. At this point, we are going to get our catheter undone from our belly. So that means we're going to take the tape off of it. And we're ready to disinfect our catheter and place it into the extension. I'm going to take my moistened gauze pads with the bleach solution and I'm going to start focusing on the top here with the connector. And then I'm going to bring that gauze pad, get the clamp, and all the way down to your next blue piece. Make sure you guys are getting the clamp. Since my fingers were touching up here where the connector is, I want to make sure I'm doing a double wipe back up where the cap is. You'll really want to focus where the clear cap meets the blue. Really clean all the germs off. When you've cleaned your catheter, you'll place it into the extension port. This is where your cleaned catheter needs to go. Before you connect into the middle, you have to hand sanitize your hands. We're going to start by removing the middle line clamp or the middle line cap and we're going to set that aside. We're going to take our catheter and quickly move it into the middle. Please be as steady as you can. The catheter can only connect into the middle. We're going to take our old cap here and remove this old piece. You can throw that away. Now the screen tells us to open the blue line clamp and your catheter clamp. So open the blue line clamp and the catheter clamp and press next to continue. Your treatment has now begun. During your first drain, as the machine starts to drain fluid out of your belly, we want to make sure that that fluid is going to look clear. This right here is your patient window. We're going to fill this window up with solution that's coming out of your belly and make sure that it's nice and clear and able to be um, read right through. To do this, I want you to hold it upside down and your little pillow, your window here, is going to fill up. Then I want you to take a piece of writing it could be a piece of paper or a um, cap. And you'll want to make sure that it looks like a magnifying glass. We don't want to see any strings in here, strands of fibrin or haziness. Now 
Now to, um, to prepare yourself to get into bed, we'll tear this tape off, and give us some slack, and then you pull up on both pieces and get ready for bed. Take this piece, this connector and yourself, and we're gonna take this and we are going to use a piece of tape to secure this to our belly. This will prevent you from accidentally setting your pin. You're now ready to go to bed. Okay, when your treatment is complete, you will see this screen right here. It's step eight. It gives you instructions on the screen to safely disconnect from your patient line. The first instruction is going to be to push in the pin. Before we get working, we need to make sure that our mask is on and that we've sanitized our hands. We're going to take our patient connector, make a quarter turn to the right, and push this blue piece and set our pin inside of our catheter. The next step is to close the blue and catheter clamps. Close the blue and your catheter clamp. Then you're going to insert the patient connector into the Stay Safe Organizer. We put the circle back into the open space here and flip it over like a puzzle piece again, making sure it's in there nice and secure. Aseptically disconnect yourself. When you see the word aseptically, it means we need to sanitize and clean our hands. Okay, we'll start by removing the new cap cover and setting it aside. Then we move to our catheter. Ensuring that the blue pin is at the end of our catheter, we're going to push in and turn at the same time. It helps some people to brace the back of this to really push and turn at the same time. Then you'll pull the catheter out and tape it securely up to your belly. We'll take this old cap and place it back on here and press next to continue. This screen right here shows you how to put your blood pressure, glucose, weight, pulse, and temperature in. We're also going to want to tell the machine what percentage of dextrose we used. I used a 1.5. and I, my blood glucose was 100, so we're gonna move the arrow down. Okay, my weight was 200, 203 pounds for the day. Pulse, 66. Blood pressure was 130 over 65, sorry. To get to the bottom number, we need to hit the OK button. And then we can move the second number down. Finally, my temperature was 97.3. Once all this information looks correct, you'll press OK to save it. And then we'll press Next to continue.